Hey, it's Dr. Nussi here again. Gyms are finally back open, but they're gonna look a little bit different. Let's talk about the new normal for our workouts. Okay, so let's get right into it. This video is going up a little early this week. I wanted to get this information out as soon as possible because today, as of the posting of this video, which is May 16th, we just found out all of the information as far as the requirements that gyms have to undergo in order to reopen. Now, this is gonna be Ohio specific. I'm gonna read all of the directives and kind of talk you through what I think a typical workout is gonna look like and is this going to actually work? Is this gonna keep people safe? This is gonna be specific for Ohio. But I have talked to colleagues and friends in other states, in Kentucky, in Louisiana, and a few other states, and it does seem in line with what other states are doing as well when we're trying to reopen gyms. So I think it gives us a good idea as far as what the government is trying to accomplish when opening gyms and trying to keep people safe and trying to keep people healthy. All right, so before we get into the specifics, typically on this channel, what I do is videos on permanent and natural weight loss. If you like that type of content, please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. All right, so let's talk specifically about what gyms have to do here in Ohio in order to reopen. Let's go through them one by one. Now, there are a few different categories here as far as uh, all of the requirements that gyms have to undergo. And there's two different sections. There's a mandatory section and then there's a recommended section. So we're gonna talk about facilities, we're gonna talk about the locker rooms, what the employees have to do, what the members have to do. There's specifics for indoor sports, for pools, if, they, if a gym has a pool, or for restaurants, if the gyms have a restaurant, for childcare, if they have a childcare uh, facility, and then what to do if you find a confirmed case of COVID-19. All right, so let's start here at the top. What do they have to do? What does the facility have to do as far as spacing, capacity, and numbers? So point number one is they need to limit the capacity, the employees and members, based on available space and ability to social distance with six feet between members, clients, except in facilities where instructor student must be in close proximity. For instance, dance instruction, swimming, personal training, etc. So point number one basically means we try to keep six feet between members and between members and staff. Now the interesting thing about this one is it says except for facilities where instructors and students must be in close proximity with each other. So I'm not really sure what point number one is going to accomplish because it's basically saying try to keep six feet apart if you can, but if you can't, then you don't need to. So this one doesn't really seem like a hard directive or requirement to me. So point number two, it gets a little more clear. Set up the facility for social distancing by spacing equipment to provide a six foot radius measured from the center of the main operation of the specific piece of equipment or by disabling equipment, bikes, treadmills, ellipticals, etc., cetera, to, to provide a six foot radius. So probably what this is going to look like is every other treadmill or every other bike or every other rower or whatever piece of equipment is going to be closed. So typically in a gym, you'll see treadmill, 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 just a row of treadmills and just a row of bikes, row of ellipticals, row of rowers, um, you know, just all lined up one next to each other and you're running or you're doing the elliptical or you're biking right next to another person. So probably what's gonna end up happening is every other piece of equipment is gonna end up being closed, which is gonna be a little bit of a downer, especially in busy, busy gyms. All right, so next is class settings. So for class settings, set up workout areas before arrival of students, allow six foot radius around the users. So basically set up the room in advance so that people are six feet apart. Reinforce spacing through training with employees. So train the employees to know what social distancing is. Remove excess seating throughout the facility so people can't sit and kind of lounge around. That makes sense. Reduce class sizes if necessary. Again, just to minimize the amount of people you come in contact with. Eliminate lost and founds. Establish a login procedure for members, members and clients and maintain that information for potential contact tracing. Now, this has been a really controversial one. 
again, I mentioned Louisiana before. Louisiana had uh, the idea where they were going to make bi all businesses, not just gyms, uh, keep a log of every customer that they interacted with and a lot of people were up in arms about this because it kind of violates their personal privacy to a certain degree so what they're trying to accomplish is contact tracing if somebody gets sick they want to know where they've been but in a gym this kind of makes sense you know people are going to be checking in they're going to know that you were there but in other businesses it does kind of push that boundary as far as personal privacy so that's all under the facility spacing capacity and numbers so now let's next talk about the sanitation these are pretty straightforward let's go through them one by one hand washing or sanitation upon entry of the facility that makes sense use hand sanitizer products that meet cdc guidelines obviously have hand sanitizer available, provide cleaning products, routine disinfection of high contact services such as desk and workstations, restrooms, pool ladders, and equipment, and then a deep cleaning after hours or during low use times for a 24 hour facility. So all this makes sense and I think most facilities, most good gyms are going to be doing most of this anyway um, you know it's just keeping the facility clean so next up in the facility in the facilities section is the signage so in the entry post signs requiring social distancing and then post a reminder signage for hand washing sanitizing of equipment and distancing so just put up signs basically talking about the directives so this is all under the mandatory section. And then under the recommended section, these are things that they don't have to do, but they're encouraged to do. When applicable, set aside specific hours for vulnerable populations, meaning the elderly or people with pre-existing conditions, they can work out separately from others and provide space at the entrance or lobby to allow spacing for coat racks. And when used, kiosks for check-ins, uh, if possible, provide foot pedals to open doors or prop doors open to avoid contact so so people don't grab the uh, door handle and open it and then the next person grabs the door handle and again that can transmit disease signage post signs with covid 19 screening questions post directional signage to encourage separation of entrances and exits and then under air circulation the only part there is under recommended and it's limit the use of fans so it's summer and you know we're talking about gyms and sweating so what they're encouraging is not using fans in gyms so i don't know how well this is going to go over uh, either or open doors when possible and have uh, you know a kind of an open air space and that would be a good option and a lot of gyms do that too kind of leave the doors open some even have these roll up doors which is great uh, you know when it's not too hot out but I'm a little nervous about the not using fans uh, situation, you know, if it gets really, really hot. Okay, so let's move down now to locker rooms and public restrooms. And it gets a little interesting here. So first things first, disable or mark every other or every third locker for non-use to enforce six foot social distancing requirements. Facilities where lockers are assigned to members are not required to disable lockers, but must enforce social distancing requirements. So every other locker, just like I talked about every other treadmill being closed or every other bike being closed, every other locker is gonna be closed to kind of keep people separated. Remove any casual seating other than benches by the lockers, that makes sense. Clean and disinfect public areas and restrooms every two hours. If independent showers, now here's where it gets interesting. If independent showers are available and used, they must be attended and sanitized between each use. So basically what this means is if you're going to shower in the gym, somebody's gotta be there, an employee's gotta be at the shower, and as soon as you take your shower and get out, they're in there cleaning the shower. So I think what's going to end up happening here is a lot of gyms are just gonna keep their showers closed. Now I am a person that showers at the gym. It's pretty much a requirement because I work out in the middle of the day and then go back to work. I don't have time to go home. So this might be a big sticking point for a lot of people. If, if gyms keep their showers closed, they might lose members uh, because of that. Or they're gonna have to actually have an employee just stationed in the locker room and just be cleaning basically all the time the shower. So this might be a, an important point. So next is disable 
or close off communal style showers except for rinsing before and after pool activities. Make sure supplies for hand washing, including soap and materials for drying hands are fully stocked, disable or close off steam rooms. So steam rooms and saunas are gonna be off limits. If towels are provided, they are to be stored, covered, sanitized containers that are clearly delineated clean versus soiled. That makes sense, most gyms do that anyway. Restroom facilities should limit the number of users at any one time based on the facility size to size current social distancing guidelines. These facilities should be cleaned, sanitized per CDC recommended protocols along with established restroom cleaning schedules. All right, under recommended, there's only one for the locker rooms. Discourage use of locker rooms, encourage members and clients to arrive dressed for a workout and clean up at home. So basically just encourage people not to use the locker rooms. Okay, so next up is what do the employees have to do? So the employees have to provide instruction, so you have to provide instruction education on COVID-19 prevention, obviously. Encourage employees to take their temperature and perform a self-assessment and not to report work if they're ill or exhibiting signs of COVID-19. So I talked in a previous video about what I thought gyms were gonna need to do when they open back up and temperature screening was one of the things that I thought might be a potential to get gyms to open back up. And here they're talking about employees taking their temperature and if it's over, let's say 100, then they aren't allowed to work. Businesses must require all employees to wear face coverings. So every employee is gonna be masked and that's a pretty common thing for most businesses now. Um, and then the only thing under recommended is they're gonna screen for temperature, history, exposure in accordance with the CDC recommendations. So again, temperature screenings and they're gonna stagger shifts, breaks and lunches to avoid mass entry and exit. Wear gloves when appropriate and when possible and dispose of clothes between interactions with members or clients. That's gonna be a tough one for um, trainers to do, obviously. All right, so what as members are we going to need to do? Here are the mandatories. Check in upon arrival of facility, that's pretty standard. Members and clients must conduct self-assessments and are not to enter a facility if they are exhibiting symptoms or have been exposed to COVID-19, obviously. When participating in class, do not arrive more than 10 minutes prior to class, and this is to prevent congregating. You know, a lot of people come early for a class and they just kind of socialize in the lobby. So again, no socializing or extracurricular activities. Maintain six foot social distancing. Obviously, that's uh, you know a big component of all of this. Partner exercising together and sharing equipment must maintain group segmentation from others exercising. Again, I don't really know what this is gonna accomplish. You're interacting closely with another person and they're allowing for it. And then at child-centric training and instruction, limit parents and guardians to one individual. So there's only one uh, parent that's allowed to take their kid to a gymnastics class, let's say, or something like that. All right, under recommended, they're gonna, we're gonna provide Option to screen for temperature, history, and exposure. All right, here's where again it gets tricky. So some gyms might elect to actually take your temperature before they allow you to go in and work out. They might require you to wear face coverings based on activity. Now, this isn't gonna go over too well. You can't really run on a treadmill with a mask on. Um, provide training instruction by appointment only. Encourage members and clients to bring their own mats, bands, or equipment when appropriate, again, to keep the contact between people to a minimum. And in martial arts training, consider the elimination of drills done with a partner. Again, I don't know how, martial arts training requires partners, so I don't know how this one's gonna be uh, enforceable either or practical. Uh, at child-centric training instruction, request parent and guardian wait in the parking lot. Yeah, that might be doable. All right, so now we've got some specifics for indoor sports, pools, restaurants, child care, and confirmed cases. So let's go through those. For indoor sports, social distancing of six feet will be adhered to unless drills and personal instruction require less separation. Again, this doesn't make any sense to me. They're basically saying keep six feet apart if you can, but if you can't, uh, no big deal. Members, clients will use their own balls, rackets, paddles, and, or equipment, again, to keep contact between people down. If balls are passed, they must be disinfected after the training session, no big deal there. See other guidance documents for gameplay and contact and contact competition sports. 
So not a whole lot as far as indoor sports goes. Um, pools, uh, we have in Ohio our own directives as far as pools go, so basically pools are to follow those directives. As far as restaurants go, we also have our own guidelines, as do most states, for restaurants. So basically follow the COVID-19 protocols as established by the state for restaurants. Remove or disable water fountains, but allow bottle filling stations if they are no touch stations. If the station requires pushing a button or lever or pushing the bottle against the dispenser, they must be disabled or sanitized after each use. Wow, that is a tricky one. No drinking fountains. You just have to fill up your water bottle. And if you fill up your water bottle and you know touch it, press it against one of those levers to get the water to come out, it must be sanitized after each use. So they encourage, this is under the recommended, they encourage members and clients to bring their own water bottles and limit or eliminate grab and go stations, vending machines. If vending machines are available, they must be sanitized after each use. Again, wow. Child care, again, we have our own specific child care guidelines. So follow the COVID-19 protocols established by the state for child care facilities and then confirm cases. What do we do if we know that somebody's contracted COVID-19? Immediately isolate and seek medical care for any individual who develops symptoms while at the facility. Shut down the space for deep sanitization if possible and under recommended work with a local health department to identify potentially infected and exposed individuals. Help facilitate Effective contact tracing notifications. Once testing is readily available, test all suspected in infections or exposures and follow testing contact, following testing, contact local health department to initiate appropriate care and tracing. So basically help the government find out who and how people contracted COVID-19. Okay, so that is the particulars. That's all the directives directly from the Ohio.gov website. All of these go into effect May 26. May 26 is when all gyms are allowed to reopen, but they must follow these guidelines. So now let's talk about a few different points. First, let's talk about what a work typical workout is going to look like, and then we'll talk about what they're trying to accomplish by putting all these directives in place, and will this actually work? Will this keep cases down? All right, so first let's talk about what a workout is going to look like once gyms reopen. Now, based on these guidelines, I don't see workouts changing all that much. And then, again, this is gonna depend on what type of workout you're doing, but let's just say you're going to the gym, you're doing some cardio and you're doing some weights. You know, this doesn't really alter what you're going to be able to do. What is going to change a little bit is potentially for these really, really busy gyms. Like let's say you go to, gym, go to the gym early in the morning or in the evening, typically busier times for the gyms, and you're looking at a row of treadmills and it's tough to even find a treadmill. Like you, get, you have these lines of treadmills or these lines of bikes and you may even have to wait a little bit to get on one of these pieces of equipment. So for these really busy gyms, if we're closing every other piece of equipment, it's really going to kind of limit the amount of people that are going to be able to access these pieces of equipment. So there might be long waits and long lines, maybe even a limit to the number of people that are allowed to go into the gyms at certain times. So it might be a real inconvenience for people to be able to get their workout in correctly if we've got these long lines for these pieces of equipment. The silver lining to that may be that I think that once gyms are opening back up, I don't think now that people are going to be rushing back in. Again, my opinion, the last video that I made on this subject was that I thought that people were gonna, you know, right, go back, right back in. It was gonna be like New Year's all over again, you know, the first of the year when everybody wants to go back to the gym. I think people are still pretty nervous about what's going on. And with all these new directives, I think it might keep people away from the gym. So it might kind of even out as far as there's less people going to the gym, but there's less equipment available. Available. So maybe it just kind of works out to where it's a normal, a kind of a normal situation as far as the capacity and the ability to get on pieces of equipment. Now, this might be different for specific classes. Like again, they talked about martial arts training. Again, I don't see how you do martial arts training without partners. Um, you know, martial arts really requires a, kind of a partnership and, and working with another person. That's what it's about. So. Again, I don't think that that's really gonna to change too much because really it was just kind of a recommendation that you don't have partner drills, but I think it's kind of a requirement, so I don't think much will change there either. Okay, so what is the government trying to accomplish by putting all of these directives in place for gyms? I think it really boils down to two things. 
The first is they're trying to keep people separated. The easiest way to contract or transmit COVID-19 is to be in very close proximity with another person. So if we can keep people apart, we can minimize that risk. You keep he hearing all throughout those directives, six feet apart, social distancing. That was the main theme through all of those different points. Number two is keeping everything clean, wiping off all surfaces, different pieces of equipment, knobs, buttons, keeping everything as clean as possible. Again, transmission of COVID-19 can happen by one person touching a surface or a piece of equipment, then another person coming along and touching it and then touching their face or eyes or mouth. That's another really good way to transmit COVID-19. So really what they're trying to accomplish is two things, keep people apart and keep everything clean. Okay, and finally, do I think this is going to work? Do I think this is going to keep people safe and healthy? Are these directives going to help keep people safe and healthy as they go back to the gym? My answer to that is I think this is about the best they could do. Keeping people apart, keeping everything clean, that's about the best you can do when you're trying to open back up a gym. Again, a gym is a tricky business. People sweat. You know, they are sometimes in very close contact with each other. We're sharing equipment. So are there going to be cases of COVID-19 transmission at gyms? Yes, of course there are. As we open up these businesses, there, the cases of COVID-19 transmission are going to go up as more people interact with each other. But I think these are the best steps that can be taken for a gym in order to open back up as safely as possible. And that's the key. We wanna make it as safe as possible. We know that that there is going to be new cases, but gyms are important. I feel like we need to get back to the gym for our physical health, for our mental health. The gym owners need to get back to business as well. So I think this is about the best that they could do. Okay, I know that was a longer type of video than my normal content, but now I'd like to hear from you. Are you gonna head right back to the gym as soon as they open up? Are you gonna stay away? Do you think that the directives that are coming out are fair? Do you think we're pointed in the right direction? Let me know in the comments section below if you have any thoughts about the reopening of gyms. All right, everybody, until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll catch everyone in the next video.